Hello Dragons, my name is Julian Lipton and I'm the Managing Director of The Nutchery. Um, I'm here today asking for a £100,000 investment in return for a 15% stake in my company. Um, the Nutchery manufacture bird feeders. Uh, the company was started by my father and the concept is really simple. It's a cage within a cage. The small birds fly through the holes on the outside to go inside and the squirrels, they can't get through because of the outer bars. And that's how the nutchery was born. Um, we supply around 300 accounts in the UK, pet shops, garden centres, wholesale, mail order, and we also export some product to Europe and the USA as well. Um, in the UK, three out of four households feed the birds, and the industry is estimated to be worth around 200 million uh, per year. Thank you very much for listening. I have some samples um, for you to have a look at, and um, any questions? An efficient pitch from experienced family businessman Julian Lipton. He needs a £100,000 cash injection to fund a new phase of growth for his innovative bird feeding business, and he's willing to part with 15%. Duncan Bannatyne wants to scrutinise the makeup of the company. Thank you, Julian. Um, you said this company was started by your father? Yes. So how long has it been in existence? 20 years. 20 years? Yes. So let's see how much profit you made in the last 20 years with the nursery. OK. Um, so the last year, 2009-10, nursery turned over 1.2 million, um, 395,000 gross profit, and gross. The, net, the net profit was around 98,000. The previous year? 888,000. Gross profit of 274, and a loss of 37,000. And the year before? Very similar turnover to the year before and uh, a loss of 27,000. What caused the losses? For the last 20 years, this has been a family-run business, but we were getting more and more work coming in and we decided to put management teams in place. Um, also, the company has had consistent turnover and variable profit for the last 20 years. We've had years where the profit has been 200, 220,000 pounds, and we've had years where we've lost money as well. The reality is it's been, I would say, very successful. There's nothing unusual in a mature business having a varied trading history, and Julian's belief in his company is clear. Now, Peter Jones wants to drill down further into the financials. Julian. Yes, Peter. Hi. Um, give me an idea of the net asset value, of where we sit today. £27,000 on the balance sheet. Positive. Uh, positive. Um, we have good projections forward. We believe that turnover t during this year will be between seven fifty and 800000 so you're going to drop by nearly 40%? We, we will drop this year, yes. Why? Um, well, there's a number of reasons for it. The, 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 the key things are that last year we, took, we picked up a very large order. It was a one-off in the size of it. It was about 350,000, so that made a difference, obviously, to the turnover figures. What, what's going to be the bottom line this year? We're estimating a loss of 78,000. So 78. So you will take your overall net asset value of that operation mm -hmm. down to a minus 49,000. Um, well, the answer to that is that if, if, you, if you're saying what would the value of the company, would, that would be the case. But we would also look at it that we've got regular gross profit over the last um, how many years? That's irrelevant. Your, okay. your, your company, your net asset value is, is sure. minus. Um, so you, so you're, you are worthless. OK. Well, you are. OK. Differing opinions between the potential investor and the would-be investee. Julian is struggling to consolidate his position in the den. Will Deborah Meaden make it any easier for him? Julian, I'm Deborah. Um, this is nice, the way you've come in and all these things, these are lovely and it's high quality. All of those things are lovely. Thank you. But you're in a grown-up business that's been around a long time. You've got to make some money at some point to make your business valuable. You're not making any money, are you? Uh, well, that's not the case. I mean, the nutri sold one and a half million feeders over the last 20 years. For next year, we're predicting a profit of 830,000, and I believe that that will... <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry, 83,000, I beg your pardon. Also, um, we have just taken on a new design team. Our focus has been completely on the future and pushing forward. What we have set about doing is designing a much more contemporary range. So if I show you an example of the, pro on the product, this is the Acorn. This is a, a squirrel-proof feeder, um, stylish. We think that, there's, that the customers are looking for something that's just a bit more design-led to put in their garden. Part of the other um, aspect of, of, of any investment would be the redevelopment of our existing range. But there is a plethora mm -hmm. of designs mm -hmm. 
of, aren't there, bird feeders? Do you know, I have got, I believe, the biggest collection of bird feeders mm -hmm. in the world. <laughs> I think my husband, every time he sees a new one, we've got it up on the tree. They're all shapes and sizes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're going to own that space. Deborah, the nutchery are, and I, if you go into a garden centre um, and you speak to our clients, are the most respected brand for squirrel, particularly for squirrel-proof bird feeders in the UK. Julian, is there something unique about your feeder? The fact that you've got the two cages, yes. are you the only people doing this? Is this something that you've got protected, you own? Nobody in the world can have a twin cage feeder? Okay. The, the patent which was granted to us, um, which expires in two years' time, um, the concept of that patent was a cage within a cage. So, so slow down, because I think okay. we might have got something okay. in here. So there was a patent that was granted when? 1993. Uh, uh, okay, so it expires in two years' time? 2014. And what happens after that? Um, we've, well, what happens after that is we continue doing what we're hoping to do, which is to keep bringing out new products and new innovative ideas. Right. If we feel that something needs to be protected, we will protect okay, it. Okay, okay. So basically, you are now redesigning because in two years' time, the business you're asking me to invest £100,000 in yes. loses its intellectual rights. Yes. That would make it very difficult for me to invest in you. But I'm afraid you've lost me. I can't invest, so I'm out. Unease over its profitability and now concerns over the longevity of the product itself. Julian loses his first dragon. And Duncan Bannatyne does not look convinced either. Julian, the valuation is crazy. Um, I'm buying companies at the moment, three times profit. Mm -hmm. At about 300,000. But you've asked for an investment that puts it at 666,000. Yes. If I was to sell the business today, um, we would take the gross profit that the business has, brand, regular turnover, uh, projected profits moving forward as well. And, and obviously, I, I, we have existing clients that are, have given us commitments um, and are working with us on an ongoing basis. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but you know, it's a great product, but um, so many reasons not to invest. And so, Julian, regretfully, I've got to say, I'm sorry, but I'm out. Julian, I don't get the, the, the disconnection between your, 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 your mind is kind of not connecting okay. sales with profit. No, I, I do understand the difference. I'm sure you understand the difference, but you keep reiterating, you keep focusing, okay. I'm not surprised, on turnover and gross profit and completely ignoring the fact that you consistently have a track record of losing money, except one year you did make 98,000, which by your own admission had an exceptional item in it. When anybody looks to value a business, they're looking at trends, they're looking at the underlying profits. The underlying profit, well, actually, there are none. Well, if you're looking at the profit of this year, it, it, there isn't no, a profit. No, no, or last year. Well, 100,000 last, uh, last year with an exceptional is, order. Next, the year, year before, minus 37, and the year and before, minus And Deborah, next year, we are predicting a profit. Of, you well, should I, have I, come I, in here red hot, understanding we're investors. You're not a startup mm -hmm. trying to sell an idea. Yes. I want your help, please. You're trying to sell us a grown-up investment. Mm -hmm. And in selling us a grown-up investment, you needed to be absolutely on it. Okay. And frankly, Junior, and you haven't been. OK. So I can't invest. And I'm out. Thank you. Julian, can I tell you where I am? Yes. I don't see me getting any return on this whatsoever. Commercially, it's not a route that I would want to walk down. I'm sorry. I'm out. OK, thank you. Three more dragons out, and the dazed entrepreneur's steadfast belief in his business seems only to have alienated the multi-millionaires. Now, only Peter Jones can save Julian's investment needs. I, I do think that you've made a decent presentation. Very, very complicated. I acknowledge I made mistakes. I, I'm going to put it down to nerves. This business, I'm passionate about it, I see existing products that I know that we can sell large quantities on, but we just can't get over that hurdle. Um, there's a lot of work that's needed to be done. We've got some fantastic ideas, and I want to take that forward. And I guess I need help. I, you know, I'm not denying that that's the case. Julian, what you should have done was to pitch to me on the basis of it's a 20-year-old business. It's got some real heritage, but it's struggling. We're running out of time with our IP. It's not happening for us but I've got some new innovative ideas to take that forward. I'm looking for you to invest money so I can take this family heirloom and this family business and make it into something quite special. 
and for that I won £100,000. And I think your whole pitch today would have been very different. But unfortunately, it's not an investment I'm going to take forward today. OK. And I'm out. Thank you. A bitter disappointment for Julian. It seems the more experienced the entrepreneur, the more demanding the dragons will be. He leaves with nothing. I wasn't expecting the financial interrogation quite as much as, um, as it happened, but I think they were valid questions and they were questions that I should have been more prepared for. Oh, it was an interesting experience. Thank you.